Hello friends, this is Dr. Saurabh Patwadhan from Nandadipai Hospital and Feco Training Center. And in this video, I'll be speaking about a cataract that changed the color. And this particular Mogagin cataract is operated on Chakshu Feco machine. Mogagin cataract always uh, poses a challenge to us because of various factors associated with it such as uh, the nucleus is highly mobile because the rest of the part of the nucleus is liquefied and uh, you have a redundant anterior capsule and many times it is associated with zonular weakness. So for such cases you have to have very controlled technique so that you don't damage the corneal endothelium also, you are careful about zonules and posterior capsule as well. This particular case is uh, given a peribulbar block because the patient was little bit apprehensive and uncooperative for topical and also patient had a, a complex cataract. I am also using a new machine which is new to me and I have to set the parameters for the machine so I'll be going slow and changing the parameters as I see the response of the machine. The anterior capsule is well stained with tripan blue and I'm starting off with the capsulexis using the bent cystitome of 26 gauge and as I make the first nick as I expect there is this milky fluid which starts coming out I am not worried about Argentinian flag sign here because but what happens just have a look cataract has turned from white to umber in just matter of seconds so that's the real color of the cataract I am using Hylucote which is same like Viscote for pressing over the anterior capsule now you can see those radial folds in the anterior capsule as I try to use the cystitome to progress the capsular axis tear, it's best to use the micro capsular axis forceps here and always remember small steps and always give a tangential pull. Never pull this capsular axis tear centripetally and I think that has to be remembered because the moment you pull it centrally, zonules are weak, they are not going to produce the counter traction and the zonules may start breaking. So, just watch carefully how I am holding the tear and then I am progressing it by pulling it tangentially in small steps. Never try to pull in one single maneuver like in a normal case. So always give this small tangential pulls all around. Don't try to go for very large axis to start with. And this is the peco tip. This is a Kelman tip which comes with the machine. and. Uh, the left hand is holding the Patwardhan's hybrid chopper which is very good for doing horizontal chops and I will show you how I used it. So I am just struggling with the FACO here because I don't know what power has to be set. So I have the technician also to help me and I am asking him to slowly increase the power as I go. I am trying here to make a small groove so that I can take hold of the nucleus for burying the tip. So I am trying to do that but uh, you can see the nucleus is very mobile and now I am trying to chop here but the hold obviously is not that good but still I am trying to chop it but of course it is not a good manure to try because the hold is not there. Uh, so I am talking with the technician and from my experience so far with the machine I decided to increase the vacuum a little bit and also increase the power a bit and uh, the FECO power was shifted to hyperburst mode and I will show you the settings now and with that uh, hyperburst mode and power increased to 40% and vacuum to 300 I could get a good hold here as you can see and that hybrid chopper which is a basically a modified Sinsky it's a 1.25 millimeter Sinsky it's a blunt tip so I'm not worried about the posterior capsule here so this is the setting that I have finally set with 40% power and 300 vacuum 
and 11 millisecond burst width so that's the parameter and i'm using 110 centimeter bottle height here for chamber stability so with these parameters now i am going ahead so while burying the tip what we have to check is that i don't push the nucleus too far i don't want to stress on the zonules and the posterior capsule and with these parameters still i get good hold and look at that hybrid chopper it just splits the nucleus into two parts and the advantage of this hybrid chopper is the right kind of ergonomics that it has it can go around the nucleus and uh, around the equator also and can chop and also it can do the vertical chops like this so i have split the nucleus right till the posterior plate i think that is very important in these cases that uh, the division should be nice and as far as complete i am controlling the feco with my foot switch so whenever the tip is buried i am avoiding further feco so that because i don't want it to cut through the nucleus and uh, catch hold of the posterior capsule so for that experience is needed for such cases of morgagnian cataracts so few surgeons advocate that uh, you can put the iol at the beginning and use it like a scaffold and then do the emulsification that also is a good approach particularly for beginners and now i am well set with these parameters i know how controlled the feco energy is being delivered and you can see that the followability is quite good with these settings there is no much of chattering here with the these uh, hyperburst mode with 11 millisecond burst and it's getting emulsified very nicely the advantage of using burst mode here is that very low energy is being used and there is no risk of uh, developing a corneal wound burn which i am also closely monitoring because this is a longitudinal power which i am using with this machine this machine does not have the torsional feco and all the time we have to watch the posterior capsule and if there are any fluctuations in the anterior chamber so so far it's going well and now for the remaining pieces i have reduced the vacuum little bit so that anterior chamber remains even further steady but so far it has been very stable i shifted to retro elimination mode because i wanted to check the posterior capsule very carefully here for the last piece and now as i am using this machine i am becoming more comfortable with the response it is giving and i think i could get the right parameters for this uh, particular case here of course over a period of time when you start using a new machine you have to keep on changing your settings and make it as safe as possible for every eye do watch my video on how to set the feco settings or parameters on youtube i think it will give you the insights so there is only one piece which is remaining so i decided that i will come out and replenish the viscoelastic here push that uh, piece in the center because i don't want to maneuver in the periphery i have already coated the endothelium with the hylu coat so i am not worried about any endothelial issues here the hylu coat is still coating the endothelium as i can see so this is the last piece and i am using the same parameters vacuum has been lowered little bit to 270 but otherwise you can see that the anterior chamber is very stable i am doing feco emulsification at the iris plane and i got really clear cornea post operatively so if you have the right technique you know how to maneuver in the anterior chamber with great care then you even with the new machine and new parameters you can always get good clinical output only thing is you have to be always mindful about what you are doing and how the eye is behaving during the surgery Thank you so much for watching to watch many more videos on my youtube so do subscribe and also you can submit your videos on our website fakotraining.org.in thank you